Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace, and today we're going to be talking about making these edge textures that I have here. You can see this is a little bit dark. I'll also talk about how some of these shapes are drawn and how I rotate the shapes. I used these techniques in my first NFT drop, The Order of Things, which was very successful. Thank you to everybody who supported me in that. I'll leave a link to the drop site in the video description, and there will also be a link to most of the code that I'm gonna talk about today. Much of what you see here is a watercolor effect and a paper texture effect. I've already done a video about that, and I'll leave a link to that in the video description as well. The short answer to how the shadow edges is being done is that it's some darker circles being drawn all along the edge. But how do you tell the computer where the edge is that's a little more complicated than you might think with a square it's a little easier with a circle it's a little more complicated how do you draw a circle because of this edges effect i'm not relying on the circle function that's built into p5.js i have to draw my own circle so to do that we begin shape we make a for loop i equals zero i less than pi times two pi times two is 360 degrees and then i plus equals 0 0.1 and then we're using a vertex to connect all the dots so if i were to change this from 0 0.1 to say 0 0.5 you would see more clearly the vertex points but i want this to look like a circle so i make this smaller now you might think well what about curve vertex so maybe i could use this but do curve vertex so it's nice and curvy along here but there's a problem right here it's kind of wonky there um, I have found that just use vertex is easier and you just have to make this smaller if you watch the watercolor and paper texture effect you'll know that I am using a create graphics uh, in order to draw the circle on and I'm using this canvas get context and this clip function. So what happens is I am going to draw the circle, then I'm going to call the clip function, and those effects are going to happen both inside and outside of the circle, but you're only going to see the part that's inside of the circle because of the clip function. If I take the clip function out, you'll see this. And you can actually see the edges here and the edges are going both inside the circle and outside the circle. So I create graphics. I make my circle using this, and I'm going to call the clip function. But there's one other thing. Uh, because I'm going to be doing these edges, I need to know where those edges are, where those uh, vertexes are. So I'm pushing all of my vertexes into an array called vertex array. So I push those into the array. I call the clip function then I finish shape. So let's look at finish shape. So the finish shape is making a background and it's calling three different functions, the watercolor function, uh, the paper texture function. I've talked about both of those in the previous video and now it's also calling the edges function. So I could comment out all of these and here you just see the background color. I could bring in the watercolor and you see that. Uh, let's take that out and put the edges in only and that's what that looks like uh, if I did only the paper texture it looks like that now I had hoped to call the watercolor function after the edges function but unfortunately the watercolor function pretty much destroys the edges function so I had to call the watercolor function first and then the edges function after that so this is what it's supposed to look like uh, we haven't actually gotten the image onto the canvas yet. You still have to call the image function, the name of the canvas that you created, and then where that canvas is going to be. The other thing I should mention is you notice with this, there are shapes that intersect each other. Uh, this is using tint. So if you're going to place an image, you can call a tint function. Uh, this can be used to color the images. Uh, but you can also give it some alpha. If you call tint with 255, this is a white color and this is an alpha. So these ones that are see-through have a 160 alpha. 
there's an 85% chance that these will be see-through and there's a 15% chance that it won't be see-through and that is the no tint function. So now let's take a look at the edges function. In the edges function I'm going through the vertex array and I'm going to be pulling from that vertex array an X and a Y. And as I'm going through the vertex array I've got I plus equals 2 because uh, the first one is the X, the second one is the Y, and then they alternate. I'm also pulling the previous vertex position because when I draw my ellipses, I'm going to want them to be between the current vertex position and the previous vertex position uh, so that they're kind of random. My fill color for the ellipses that I'm going to be drawing here are not exactly the color that I have here. I'm going to be varying my hue some. I'm varying my saturation. The brightness I'm varying, but it's going to be less bright because I want them to be darker in on the edge. That's the whole point of this. And then the edge alpha I've got being sent here, I think it's like six or something. The X position for my edge ellipse is going to start off being somewhere between uh, the current vertex and the previous vertex, but then I'm going to add to that a random Gaussian distribution. This is a demonstration of what random Gaussian is doing. Uh, I started from the example on the P5 website and then I expanded it a little bit. With random Gaussian, you can have two numbers. Uh, the first is where is it starting from? And so here we're, we're starting at position 200 uh, in the X position. And then the second number is the standard distribution. This is represented by this red line here on both sides. So the random Gaussian is going to be uh, returning a number. Uh, it could return any number, really. You could have numbers way out here or way out here, but they tend to be in between here. So most of them are going to be right along uh, this center line, and then there are going to be a few out here. If I were to count all of these, um, do a whole bunch and count them all, you would see a bell curve. And this is what I want with my edge. I want the darkest right along the edge, and then it gradually gets lighter. So more of the circles are drawn right along the edge, fewer circles drawn farther in. Also at the end, I call a blur function to try to get rid of the outline of those circles. Now I could have, instead of doing ellipses, I could have done some sort of wonky star like I did with my watercolor effect. Probably should have done a wonky star, but this is what I did. Now since I did the order of things, I've been playing with the edges a little bit more. So first I'm coming up with the number for the random Gaussian for the X and the Y. And that's going to give me the position for where my uh, ellipse is going to be drawn. So, so far it's doing the same thing. I've just ordered things differently. But now I'm calculating a distance from the edge. Uh, how far from the vertex is that ellipse being drawn? And using that distance from the edge, I'm affecting the brightness. So first I subtract from the brightness the standard distribution number, and then I add back the distance from the edge. And what that does is if you've got something close to here, it's going to be darker. If you've got something farther out, it's going to be lighter. I think this still needs some tweaking to it. I'm going to continue playing with it, and you are welcome to continue playing with it as well. You're welcome to use all of these textures that I'm showing to you, but please give me some credit in your code, and if you post somewhere, you might give me a shout out. I'd appreciate it. I did try quite a few things coming up with a shadow edge. This is one of the outcomes, which looks really cool. Unfortunately, it's super process heavy. It takes a long time. Uh, this is putting all of the vertexes into an array and calculating the distance of every vertex from every other vertex. And if you're close to a vertex, then we're going to replace the pixels with a dark color. If you're uh, far from a, any other vertex, then you're going to replace the pixels with a lighter color. That was a lot of calculations and not very practical. An advantage of drawing a circle in this manner is that you can draw a part of a circle. If I do 0.5, then we get something like this, which doesn't look right. 
we have to add a couple more vertexes. This is interesting. So I added vertex R plus 200 and I got this. That's very nice. Uh, not what I intended to do. If I do vertex 200 comma 200, I get this. There's a little bit missing here though. It's not quite straight. So we need to add one more. There we go. So I added 200 comma R plus 200 and that finished that little bit right there. Now I'll call a quarter circle function in this code. I've already translated to the middle of my create canvas. Uh, so I don't need to be adding anything to this. I'm doing my vertexes, I'm pushing into the array, and then I'm finishing with the points down here and up here uh, and pushing those into the array. Now there's a problem with this because I need to do shadows all along this edge. And I'm right now I'm only doing shadows along this edge and a little bit of shadow along this edge and no shadow along this edge because this is just the closed shape part. Let's switch over to a make rectangle function instead of a make quarter circle. And let's take a look at the make rectangle function. So again, I am not using the rectangle or square function from P5JS. I am actually drawing this square using all the vertexes because I want to push all those vertexes into the array so that I can make my edges later. So this part right here is going from the top left point all the way over to here and we're doing it in increments. And I calculated how many increments I want to use using my height and my width. Um, I could have used some other sort of formula to figure out how many increments, but this is what I came up with. So when I do my quarter circle, I'm going to have to do this same sort of thing in order to finish my quarter circle with those two edges. The other thing to keep in mind with this is that I'm going to have some shapes that I might want to rotate. The square and the circle, it doesn't matter if I rotate them, but with a quarter circle or with a triangle, it does matter. So here, if I hit start, uh, you can see different rotations of a triangle. It's the same triangle, just rotated differently. So I've translated to the center of my create graphics, and then I'm rotating by random four floor times pi times 0 0.5. So this is basically 90 degrees. It's either going to be zero rotation, 90 degrees, 180, or 270. In this example, I'm not breaking up the lines into a whole bunch of vertexes. I'm just calling the triangle function. But notice here that instead of translating back to zero, zero, I'm actually staying in the center and translating to negative size divided by two, um, basically drawing from the center out. It might be a bit confusing at first because instead of doing zero to width, I'm doing negative width divided by two to positive width divided by two. But I found that doing it in this manner is actually helpful to me. There's one other thing to note here because I'm doing the create graphics. If I make my triangle uh, exactly the same size as my create graphics, let me show you what happens. It almost looks the same, but notice that this line is darker than this line and this line because the line is partly being drawn outside of this canvas. So to fix that, I'm going to multiply by 0 0.99. Now I've made my triangle slightly smaller than the canvas, and now I can see the line. Now that quarter circle that we talked about uh, there's another problem with the way I've done this. I made a canvas that is this size, and then I'm drawing from here out. And if I clip, you'll notice that it's doing the watercolor effect and the paper texture effect for this entire canvas, which is a waste of resources. We really want, only want the effect happening in here so that we're doing one quarter of the amount of work that we need to do. So if we look at my final product, I am creating graphics that is the size of the quarter circle's radius, not the size of the entire circle of, of a diameter of a circle. I translate to the center of that canvas. I rotate by increments of 90 degrees. 
my radius, instead of multiplying by 0.99, I subtracted one from my radius in this case. That way part of the quarter circle doesn't get cut off. But notice here in my X and my Y, instead of doing it from the center of the canvas, I'm doing it from negative width divided by two, negative height divided by two. So that is starting in the top left corner. That is where my center of rotation is gonna be for this quarter circle. Another interesting shape is this make wave shape. That's this one right here. To do this, I'm starting with a center of rotation up here at the top uh, in order to do this, and then I go down to the bottom in order to do this. There's two curve types, uh, one that would do this and one that would do this. And so this is one of the curve types, and you can see that I am starting in one position, and then I switch to finish the shape in another position. So I think that's all I want to say for this video. Uh, there are certainly more details I could go over talking about the order of things, but the main thing I wanted to go over in this video was the texture and some of the drawing of the shapes. So that's going to do it for this video. If you've liked this video, you can give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel, ring the bell for notifications. Uh, comments are always welcome. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.